You travel back in time to 1947 America. You have a fully functioning smartphone with access to the modern internet and $10,000 cash. What do you do? Google the stock market and lottery numbers every day for the rest of the month then privately fund research and patent key technologies, transistors, Tupua, bubble wrap, spandex, grow said empire into a privately owned military industrial leader, take over the world, 10 years tops, thanks Google. Stock market and lottery numbers, your actions will be affecting those results, privately fund research and patent key technologies, transistors. Tapua, bubble wrap, spandex. Do it all in one year, so you have patents over all of the technology in the world, then use leverage to become too big to compete with during the duration of your patent, so people cannot compete when the patents expire. Maybe sell illegal firearms to the Shinanman protesters, so they can fight back against the military. Also, but Google when it offered itself at one million dollars. I'm in my 60s now, so given the state of medicine then I'd be pretty lucky to make it another 30 years, though some of my older generation relatives did it. So I wouldn't try to change the world in any great way. I'd become a sports bettor to make more startup cash and then invest. As I was born in the 50s, I'm used to tech that isn't that much less primitive that in 47, although I'd probably end up subscribing to 4 or 5 newspapers and certain magazines. I'd settle in San Francisco, because I have always loved the place, and sure wouldn't mind living again before success drained some of the specialness out of it. Might have a place in Hawaii too, for the same reasons. I might be tempted to roam around the rudimentary Silicon Valley and drop some investment money in the right places. Hewlett Packard had just incorporated in 47, but graduates of HP would be spreading out into new ventures over the next 20 years. I think I'd just access stock market history, play very conservatively, lose some on purpose so not to raise too much suspicion, and also so my moves don't end up changing history, and quietly watch history unfold from my very comfortable penthouse. Google and draw the chemical formulas for the polio and chicken pox vaccination, then pull up on a medical research facility in my new dodge, then with the profits from basically eradicating polio and chicken pox help a man named Preston Tucker pull some R&D on his new car company, then stock up on an amazing cough syrup called heroin. I'm going to bring metal to the world early. Never take enough to destroy iconic bands possibility of gaining mainstream traction. Just a song here and there. I do not deny that there is the possibility of them never gaining recognition. But you're not going to come out of nowhere and start blasting cannibal corpse in the 1950s. On top of there not being any distortion pedal slash amps that would make the distortion we use today, you would 100% be burned at the stake for playing the devil's music. People thought Black Sabbath and Kiss songs were demonic in the 70s. Well, you better believe you'd be assassinated for playing Angel's Holocaust by Iced Earth in the 50s. Nah, you gotta start somewhat slow. We are going to start with something somewhat fast paced, louder, and not too aggressive. Maybe some grunge, smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana or some blues rock like Wicked Ones by Dorothy. Amps at the time could handle that distortion if we do the old stab a hole in the amp speaker trick. Then bring out some punk or something. I'm thinking Hell Song by some 41. Of course, there would be huge backlash. A song about teenage angst, and then another title Hell. Talk about Efrict. On second thought, we'll do in too deep. It's got a nice intro to modern solos. Record a whole album along those lines maybe including other songs like Blow by Ed Sheeran, Learn to Fly by Foo Fighters, Nothing Left to Lose by Heaven's Basement, and Screw It, Diggy Diggy Hole by Windrose. You know what? Screw all that and just record prequel album by Ghost. We can amp it up a bit for album number 2 now. We've been there long enough that we have gained the skills from the internet to build a distortion pedal and early keyboard. We are going to speed things up a bit. Iron Maiden is coming early with a trooper or 2 minutes to midnight. From Hell with Love by Beast in Black is super catchy. Something by Sabaton, but probably not about WWII. It's too soon. I like Metal Machine. Recording the whole Appetite for Destruction album should also do it, if we don't care about iconic bands anymore. Alright, now that we've introduced the world to some modern metal, the third album can get a little harder. 
Strife by Trivium, The Heart Collector by Nevermore, The Great Deceiver by Vergre, Chapter 4 by Avenged Sevenfold, and maybe stupid fun songs like Oots Force by Gloria Hammer and Drink by Alastorm. We've worked our way to becoming harder, louder, and faster, have introduced people to growling through the A7X song. It's time to really get into the weird stuff. Hit the ground running with some sum of Lydia by Nevmore, and go into Nemesis by Archinomy. I like some Amina math, so to our light of the thunder god it is. We gotta teach people the metal salute now too, since this is before Dio, so raise you horns by Amina math is also coming. And before we get assassinated for being possessed by the devil, because we're singing like a tiger roars, follow all of this up with Shake It Off by Taylor Godam Swift. Well you haven't said we have any way of getting back to the present, so at first it sounds good. But you slowly become more and more depressed as all the technological advancements you had become dependent on haven't been invented yet. To top it off, you can't find a decent job, because your education is not relevant for the era, so you end up willing away your years, a sad one out soul. It's the 50s, and you have your phone, with its charger I'm guessing. With access to 2019 internet, you also have roughly 115 points dollars comma zero zero of contemporary money. You're going to adapt just fine. The drop of comfort won't be as big as you make it out to be, and your phone basically merges the most impactful technological advancements that shape up modern daily life. You may not have relevant skills, but you're in post WWII US, employment won't be an issue. And, again, you have modern internet in 1947. You can teach yourself relevant skills pretty easily, if you don't want to go with the easy gambling money. After all, you have the equivalent of 115 point dollars, you're settled for the next 3 years, so you have all the time in the world. The worst part will probably missing your loved ones and dodging Vietnam. I dunno. If you're reasonably extroverted, or willing to try and meet new people, the internet hasn't been invented, yet and you could probably find somebody dateable at a bowling alley or barn dance. I figure that's one of the eras, where people were constantly hosting social parties, because they didn't have Netflix. You might have to look for a widow, but at least you'll have company. Otherwise you just blend in, bide your time until the 60s, and then find some hippies to chill with, because they'll probably be too high to care. <laughs> Hole up somewhere, and start exchanging letters with influential people. With Wikipedia, it wouldn't be too hard to know things about them that nobody else did at the time, and thus come across as someone to be taken seriously but not complained about in public for fear of being thought insane. It'd be pretty fun to work on the early internet, when it comes time for that, maybe write some Cfi about a future without privacy, to try to bias technologists toward building it in earlier. I think the overall coolest and least continuity breaking thing to do would be, to archive as much stuff that's lost today as possible. Put it somewhere it won't be found and published till after my time machine departed, and it shouldn't prevent me from becoming the person who goes back. Okay, fun. That's about $112,000 in today's money. So let's see what we can do with that. First, you have to live, so. House, $6,600. New car, $1,300. Clothes to fit the time period, $50. That leaves about $2,050 to mess around with. Two of the top performing stocks in the 1950s were Polaroid and Avon, so I'd invest heavily in those for the long term. For the short term I'd look up a history of winning Kentucky Derby horses since 1947 and start a lucrative cash flow while I wait for the stocks to start paying off. Use that money slash fame to hang out with the Rockefellers and Vanderbilts of the time. Build more wealth with those connections. Buy real estate, invest in IBM, GM, Ford and other companies that did well. Probably run for president since I know enough basic history to dominate us in foreign policy. Veto a lot of the racist bullshit politicians did back then. Die rich and famous. Oh, and Rupert Murdoch would have been 16, so I'd pay someone to run him over with an old smobile. Edit, I did this cursory research in about 15 minutes, so I'd turn off my phone until I really needed it to look something else up. Dollar sign 10k cash. Use Google to bet on things that will multiply my cash position into the millions. That shouldn't be too hard if I just concentrate on long odds. 
with the cash hoard, I'll go to war on post WW2 countries that are now prosperous and scoop up swaths of real estate for cheap. Tokyo, Berlin, Paris, London, you name it, and I will have so much real estate that I'll need count in square miles. The real estate will provide positive cash flow which I'll use to purchase more real estate and stocks of target current conglomerates whose stocks were essentially worthless, especially from the perspective of the strong and valuable US dollar at the end of WW2. There are similar opportunities in the US, and due to the lack of the war-torn discount, I may have to do this over a decade, but again, use existing cash on long odds to get started. Use that to buy swaths of real estate in Silicon Valley, that was then mostly farms and definitely rural. But what's Silicon Valley without the tech? Of course I'll have the shares of the best companies, fueled by my real estate in rent and or as collateral. I'll be on first name basis with Bill, Steve, Jeff, Bezos, Larry and Sergi, etc. At my current age, I'll probably live to see the dot com boom, which I'll need to put in sell orders in case I kick the bucket before the bust. The most difficult thing here is to remain fairly anonymous, because if things flow too well, someone's going to take notice. That means no consistent and outlandish winnings on games of chance, and just be a smart investor that no one will ever suspect your unfair and frankly supernatural insight. So, bonus answer to what the hell am I going to do with it all? I'll set up a trust, and those gazillion dollars will fund the Hall of Justice, the Avengers, Capt, the Kingsman. Charles Angels, and other fictitious entities that fight for the underprivileged, and for peace and justice. I'll have agents trained up so well, that crooked politicians and psychopath CEOs will not be a thing.